My name's Dave DeBow, founder of MoneyPartnerFormula.com, and this show is built for everyday real estate investors who are actively doing deals and looking to scale using other people's money. So if you're an active real estate investor and you want to get featured on the show to talk about your own real estate and capital raising experiences, then just go to DaveInterviewsYou.com. Now let's get rolling with this episode and remember to subscribe for daily interview content. Welcome to Property Profits Podcast. I'm your host, Bryce Kaminsky, filling in for Dave Dubow. And have you ever wondered what it takes to restart your investing journey from scratch, facing challenges and transforming personal loss into a powerful driving force? Well, today, my guest is no stranger to the ups and downs of the real estate roller coaster. Joining me today, Bill Sweeney, a resilient individual originally from Philadelphia and is now making waves on the picturesque central coast of California. He's not only conquered the hurdles, but is on a mission to create a lasting legacy through a unique apartment project. Bill, welcome to the show. Great to have you here. Thanks for having me. Yeah, there's a lot to unpack. We were talking a little bit before the show, and the main question is always, how did this get started for you? How did you get into real estate? Okay, so while I was in college, I went to Penn State. I decided to be an ocean lifeguard during the summers. Mm-hmm. And after that, I after I graduated, I realized I needed to find an actual job. So one of my friends I lifeguarded with uh, her father owned a real estate brokerage, and I asked if I could join. So I got my real estate license in New Jersey, joined the brokerage, and about six months later, I got my first sale. Uh, this first sale was a really good opportunity for me. It was a $5.2 million house. Uh, I had a soundboard. Ear, 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 ear. <laughs> $5.2 million commission. Not exactly the whole thing, but you know, if you know anything about the commissions, that's a a good job, man. Appreciate it. Yeah. Uh, So it was my ex-girlfriend now. It was her mother buying a property down the shore. And it really kicked off my real estate career and allowed me to buy my first property. So I was able to buy a property at 22 years old. And during that time, I had roommates move in with me. So I basically lived there for free, charged them low rent, and we all just hung out and did our own thing. So I did real estate part-time for a little while. Um, but I was given an opportunity to work for Planet Fitness as the director of real estate development. Mm. So basically what I did, I would find the properties. I would uh, select the bidders, do the project management, make sure everything was going planned. And then uh, move on to the next one. I was able to do about four or five of them total Mm -hmm. and a few remodels as well. Yeah, that's a good opportunity. How did you come into that? So my ex-girlfriend's parents owned Planet Fitness in Philadelphia and Chicago. So they had about 36 gyms. And they saw that I wanted to be involved in real estate. A role came up for the company. And I was able to capitalize on it. It's a definitely a who you know situation here. So I did the I did the quick math on that at at a, a point and a half commission. Congratulations on the sale. Um, when you started, you know, like that's kind of a a strange way to be involved in real estate. But sometimes people don't recognize commercial and development as that space because you know you look at a gym and. It's going to need to be, you know, there's going to be a painter in there. There's going to be flooring. There's going to be massive electrical uh, contracting that goes in to plug all of the, those uh, equipments together and, and get it all going. So um, that's originally in Philadelphia, and you said that you recently have moved. Correct. So are you doing real estate now out in California? So I recently began working for a private equity company and I, I'm doing acquisitions for them now, uh, mm-hmm. but I'm doing apartment building. So basically I'm finding apartment buildings for them to acquire and uh, they're buying cash and uh, yeah, that's pretty much the basics of it. But 
it must be nice to have someone with that sort of cash kicking around to acquire these things. Cause a lot of the challenges in, in multifamily acquisition is like, who's got $5.2 million um, sitting around. And so hedge funds, private equity firms, if you can get connected with those um, it certainly can outlet these deals that are out there. Um, but, you know, can be challenging to sometimes finance. So as far as acquiring those things or finding them, what do you think has been most successful for you as far as finding these things or talking to the owners to really convince them, hey, it's time to sell? Um, so I haven't closed my first deal with this company yet. It's only been about three weeks since I started, mm -hmm. but I've been doing pretty well on Facebook uh, groups, uh, just reaching out to owners directly on there. And then they're DMing me and sending me their properties saying, hey, this is off market. We're mainly looking for off market properties. So anything that's mm -hmm. on the market, we don't want. We're trying to get 20% below market rate mm -hmm. uh, in order to close on a deal. So I've, I've probably sent about 15 deals over so far and haven't closed on any of them. But I'm also keeping these deals in my back pocket saying, hey, other investors, I have these deals. We don't want them, but maybe you do. Yeah, because the, you know, some people think that, especially in a larger multifamily, um, and that price ticket that you're closing like one a, a month or something like that. But the reality is that um, a lot of commercial real estate agents are only really closing a handful of deals a year, um, and they take six months to kind of wash them out. You know, as soon as you even get uh, into the negotiation, it might be you know four to six months before you actually. Um, get a commitment after all the due diligence and things like that. So commercial moves slower, um, but the paychecks are definitely bigger as you're getting commissions on larger things. So, you know, when it comes to all this real estate stuff that you've been doing and, you know, getting in over here and then the Planet Fitness thing and now over on the acquisitions, what is it you would say is your unfair advantage? You know, what is it that comes easy to you that other people might find difficult? So I guess just from being a lifeguard, I was around a lot of people uh, often. So I was able to talk to people very easily and kind of just make them feel comfortable um, and just be honest with people and not beat around the bush, very direct. Hey, this is what we're trying to do. How can we get this done? I'm trying to close a deal as soon as possible. Yeah. You know, being able to deal with that human nature of people, especially um, in commercial is, is sometimes difficult because they might be a legacy owner, you know, they might be 65, 75, 85, own the apartment for 40 years or something is now moving on. So let's talk a little bit about what the future holds. So when we're looking at what is it that you've got your eye on as far as your own projects, or um, we talked a little bit before the call about well, let's touch on that for a second, if you care to. I mean, you don't have to get into that if you don't want to, but tell us about the apartment project and and maybe go as far as you want in that backstory. Okay, so uh, I am planning on getting into my own apartment complex uh, for single mothers. Um, I'm doing this in honor of my mother who passed away. It was a goal of hers for me to have affordable housing for single mothers. Um, I lost her almost two years ago, and this is really important for me because it keeps her legacy alive. Um, so basically, my goal is to get government subsidies involved, low rent, high security, possibly a gym, maybe a daycare, mm -hmm. and like one to three bedroom apartments at an affordable rate. Yeah, because you definitely need... Uh, multiple rooms. Um, that's probably one of the biggest challenges is the rent that typically, uh, you know, single people can afford has them sleeping in the living room, you know, has them sleeping on the couch. Um, I came from that background, you know, me and my brother bunk beds in one room and my mom had like a divider and she's sleeping in the other half of the living room. That was her bedroom. So, you know, to be able to to kind of give a different sort of framework um, is very admirable goal. So how far along are you on that project? Is it still 
um, you know, in the, the planning phase or have you, you found any land or do you have any idea where that might go and what that might be? So I just started looking for properties. I have some agents who are sending me properties in Philadelphia. Um, I'm still in the planning phase. I do have general contractors who are interested in working with me. I have an architect who's interested in working with me. Um, so I have a few connections from past experiences that I think will be able to help me move forward. Mm -hmm. And I also have a few investors that said they would possibly be interested if they saw the numbers and could make something work. Yeah, because you're going to definitely have to raise some capital um, to put that together. What has been the main way that you've been able to find capital for this project and, and other projects that you've been working on? Uh, so basically, Facebook uh, groups, they've been pretty helpful with having me uh, find like hard money lenders, uh, everything I need. It's kind of in that realm. There's a bunch of investors who are willing to help people. So it's been pretty good for me. I mean, I'm still early in the process, but mm -hmm. the amount of support I've gotten for me posting this just a few days ago that I want to make this happen, it's mm -hmm. finally starting to go in the right direction. Um, it's pretty exciting. Now, are you finding that the people who are interested in jumping in on board on that project have similar, you know, similar visions, or is it just people who want to like invest in in a project period? I've had a few people DM me saying this project would mean a lot to them because they come from similar backgrounds. So I'm mm -hmm. seeing that. And I'm also seeing people who are already in that field and are just willing to help because they like the concept behind it. So what type of involvement uh, did you have in Philadelphia as far as real estate is concerned? Um, so most of my sales, I, I've only had, I don't know, maybe 15, 20 sales, but I've done over 10 million in real estate, uh, just residential real estate. Mm -hmm. And then that doesn't uh, account for the commercial sales that I've done with Planet Fitness. I wasn't making commission on the Planet Fitness sales, but it gave me a lot of experience and a lot of connections. So I'm pretty grateful for it, even though I wasn't making too much money. Yeah, I mean, that's that's an interesting opportunity. So what, you know, beyond, so you're doing these acquisitions, you're looking at constructing this, um, this apartment block, what, what would you, what would you say was the reason that this, this acquisitions company was interested in bringing you on board? I think they liked my experience dealing with uh, property owners directly and being able to deal with commercial properties. Not many people know how to handle these type of things. So I guess my experience is definitely a major factor. Yeah, because I mean, if you look at the paperwork involved for a residential purchase versus a commercial purchase, a um, few more pieces of paper, definitely uh, to navigate that. And I would say, you know, from my experience dealing with commercial, especially with like real estate agents and, and different wholesalers, it's almost the game of follow up. You know, there's not, it's not so much like I can walk into a single family home with a blank contract and do my thing and walk out with a, you know, signed offer from a home, homeowner. And that's just not the case when you're dealing with, um, you know, multi use or multi uh, family commercial. So you really have to do um, a lot of points of contact. So how do you manage the follow up with, you know, let's say your capital partners and these acquisitions, because, you know, to stay on top of something for six months to get paid is really the skill in the business. So give the people at home, maybe a couple of tips on if they're just getting into it, what you found to be successful to stay in contact with the whole deal because there's lots of moving pieces. I would definitely say keep notes. Uh, I have I use like spreadsheets um, and then just have all the the items separated so you can keep organized. Um, that's been pretty helpful for me. Just having some like something written down where you can actually see, all right, this is what I have to do. This is what I have to do and make a checklist and make sure you follow through with that checklist 
and then reach back out to people if you need to. Mm -hmm. Cause yeah, you could certainly, you know, drop the ball on, on a larger commercial and spend three months on it and have it fall through. Like I, I was doing one a couple of years ago and I brought it most of the way there, but I was like, ah, these tire kickers aren't going to end up closing. I'm wasting my time. And that can happen in the commercial space. You know, you're three or four months in, you've shown it like three or four times. And Hey guys, you're looking at the same electrical panel that you looked at last time. And what ended up happening is I, I took my foot off of it and turns out, um, it, those people ended up carrying on without me and closing the deal. So I walked away from it. And I think I remember being on the phone because the, the agent that I was working with was my agent. I was like, you know what, this thing, it's eating up my time. If you can close this door, go close the door. And they took it to the conclusion, but it just goes to show that um, when there's motivated parties, if you're not the like transaction person, they'll just find someone else to transact and you'll get cut out of the deal. So have there been any obstacles like that in, in the commercial game where um, maybe you got cut out or maybe you dropped the ball and wish you could have done it different? I mean, when I was working for Planet Fitness, I probably found about a thousand properties and communicated with uh, maybe 50 to a hundred different brokers. And we ended up only closing on about three or four of those deals. So it takes a lot of work in order just to get one close. So that's what most people don't understand. They think, oh, I found this deal. I'm going to close. And they look right at the commission check of what they're going to get paid. They calculate it before they have a buyer, before they have an offer. They're like, oh, 1% of. People jump the gun a lot and they don't realize that you have to, it takes a lot of work in order just to get one closed. So yeah, my advice would fail, right? They typically fail in the due diligence. Something's up, you know, if they're selling, they'll find it. You know, the due diligence, I always say people are like, oh, send me, send me, send me the pro forma and stuff like that on a, co a commercial deal. And I'm like, okay, cool. And I get the pro forma and I send it across. And I'm just thinking to myself, it doesn't matter because the guys, the guys probably put it together himself. It's on a napkin. It's on a word document. They're going to like a real serious buyer, like your, um, uh, your fund there. They're just going to do all the, their own due diligence. They're going to audit the rent rolls. They're going to audit everything. They're going to check the maintenance. They're going to want to see receipts. So, you know, for me, I would always say to people like, get some like baseline data to get the buyer interested and then let them do, they're going to do their due diligence anyways, just like, you know, buyers are liars, sellers are liars. So let them sort it out and just kind of transact that. Have you, have you come across that um, a lot or a little with the information provided by the sellers? Well, so for me, I do my own spreadsheet, no matter what they, they, they tell me what the numbers are. So that I do my own underwriting and then uh, it will tell me like if this is a good deal for us or not. Mm -hmm. And that will be my basis. And if the numbers don't work, I have to drop the the price. And if it doesn't work for them, I just move on to the next deal. So yeah. I, I just have like a baseline set of what I need in order to get the deal closed. And if they can't make that happen, then I just move on. Well, I love it when you get the pro forma and all the numbers are round. It's <laughs> like, it's all zeros. It's like 2000. How much did it cost for snow removal last year? 1000. It's just yeah. like, okay. So it wasn't like $1,137 and 54 cents. So like, clearly you have no idea what it is. And that's a clear indication. So people listening at home, if you get a pro forma with lots of zeros on it, it's time to really dig into it. If it's really nice and it's, maybe it's put together by property management, maybe there's some validity to it. But do your research on the back um, or you're going to end up uh, the deal is just going to fall apart later, you know, because your buyer is going to do the due diligence and figure it out. So save yourself some time, save your buyer some time, do your own due diligence. Now, as far as capital goes for this apartment uh, complex that you're putting together, um, how much money do you think you're going to have to raise for that and in what period of time? So I think it would probably cost anywhere from. 800,000 to 2 million total. Mm -hmm. um, that's including like construction. I just want to do a small apartment complex just to get my foot in the ground. So maybe mm -hmm. like a 12 unit. Yeah. And uh, 
I'm looking for something that is that needs work that is undervalued and would be a good investment opportunity for other people. I'm not trying to make money off of this deal. I just want to do this deal for my mom basically and help other people. Yeah. Get so, it going, get it off the ground. So um, there's one, one more, what was I going to say? The question is, if you were to start again, you know, you've been doing real estate now for, for a few years. If you were to start again with what you know now, uh, what would you do differently, if anything? Definitely invest my money better. Mm -hmm. It's easy to get caught up when you're getting a $65,000 paycheck when you're 21 years old. Mm -hmm. Going out on the weekends, gambling, probably wouldn't have gotten myself into uh, the gambling as much. That was something uh, I made a big mistake on. Uh, living the fast life, you get that that paycheck and you just want to go out with your friends on the weekend and mm -hmm. put money on sports games that you think are going to win just to make more money, just getting caught too caught up in the money. So definitely mm -hmm. invest better. I was also involved with stocks that were very risky. Mm -hmm. um, I was involved in cryptocurrency that got stolen. Just not keeping my money uh where I need it to. Yeah. And that's kind of the tail of the tape is like, uh, I remember I had, you know, back in the day, I had a, a girlfriend high school, she, her Chinese mother grabbed my hand and said, look, you've got holes in your fingers, you're going to be money's going to fall through. It's like a Chinese <laughs> proverb. And I was like, man, they are like, they are huge. So it's like, maybe I should get someone you can put your hands together tight. And you can see like right through and it's just like, yeah, the money's falling right through these old hands. So I got to find a money manager. I've done the same, you know, you make some wholesale checks and it's like a feast or famine thing. You're like hungry to, to spend it almost, but you know, I, same thing. Wish I would have put a few more in the, the rainy day fund. Now, if people want to invest with you, they want to, um, you know, reach out to you and get, get in part with this project that you're working on. Um, or if they have like some commercial deals that might be of interest to you, how do they connect with you? What should they do? Um, I guess the easiest would be follow me on Instagram. I just, uh, I'm getting a website built right now. So it's, that's mm -hmm. currently not set up, but uh, it's in the works. It should be ready in like a week or two, but I have all my other socials at the bottom of my Instagram. There's a link. So you can follow me on LinkedIn, Facebook, but that would probably be the easiest way. And awesome. it is. Billy underscore Sweeney underscore. Awesome. Awesome. Well, I really appreciate you, uh, you know, sharing your story with us and I wish you all the luck with that, that project. Um, you know, I think it's important work that you're doing. Appreciate the opportunity. Yeah, no problem. And until next time, guys, we'll catch you on the next episode. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed that episode. And as always, if you want to listen to more daily interview content, make sure you subscribe. And if you're an active real estate investor and you're doing deals and you'd like to get featured on this show, then just head over to DaveInterviewsYou.com. Now at MoneyPartnerFormula.com, we help real estate investors to create a process for predictably getting capital so they can do more deals without relying on hard money lenders or the banks. We do this by building them a private capital marketing system. Now, if you want help turning yourself into a big money capital attraction machine, then book a call with our team to see how we can help. Just visit moneypartnerformula.com to find out more. All right, take care and we'll see you on the next interview.